Dawn, Sunny, Leonard, and Jaxie poofed into a sprawling desert. As Dawn began to orient herself, she was pleased to see that they seemed to have landed in the place where she saw Rita from the vision Kyla showed her. Dawn looked around to see if everyone made the trip unscathed. Ah, uh, is everyone is everyone okay? I'm uh, I'm quite all right. <laughs> that was a bumpy... oh my god, Sunny! Dawn turned to find Sunny on the ground, flat on her back. She was pinned beneath a large, hairy black demon. Dawn, no. It's Jaxie. What? Jaxie? Hearing Best Mommy call his name, the now significantly larger and more demonic Jaxie excitedly bounded towards her. Oh, oh, oh kid, hold on, hold on, you. Ah! <laughs> I, I'm glad you made it here, too. I, I believe he wants you to acknowledge what a big boy he is. Oh, uh, yes. You're such a big, strong guy, you knocked me over. You're so strong. Look at you. Yes, you oh, did. You're so big, you destroyed my jacket. <laughs> oh, gracious. Your jacket looks more like a mop now. Uh, if I knew you'd get stronger and bigger, I probably wouldn't have stuck you in my jacket. Look at your big teeth and claws. How fearsome. Yes, he wasn't kidding about getting more demon here. He's gotten sweet god stand up! What? That's a rectum weevil! Oh, oh, I'm guessing it's exactly what it sounds like. Yes, and having things up my butt is a hobby of mine. If I hate those things, then can They're you They're bad imagine? news. Got it. Oh. Uh. Jaxi. He ate it. Will he be okay? <laughs> oh, uh, yes, he's actually had one before. He said they taste like sniffing a butt. Gross. Eh, at least he's happy. So, Leonard, you said that you could only track Rita if we had something from the hell dimension she's in, right? Yes. It's not so much that I can track Rita, as I can track what hell dimension an item has come from. I know this is the place I saw in the, I don't know, vision Kyle showed me. I know this is where Rita landed, but I don't... Oh, goodness! What? He picked up her scent. He's tracking her! How? It could have been ages since she was here. Jaxie, sweetie, wait for us. Well, I guess he's leading the way. I'm glad he convinced us to bring him. Hold on. Is that a sign for a Bennigan's? Determined to talk to Kyle, Keegan rummaged through Rita's things to find the magic shrooms that would get them to the dreamscape. Not wanting him to go alone, Viv took some with him. This trip to the dreamscape wouldn't be as simple as it was last time. Rita wasn't in this dimension. Their proximity to her is what allowed them to enter the dreamscape after taking the shrooms in the first place. Without her here, they needed some way to direct their trip towards Death's pocket dimension. Because of this, Viv had spent a couple of hours hooking them both up to assorted workshop devices that Keegan couldn't make heads or tails of, and they began their... trip. Uh, it worked! Uh, Christ on a cracker, I was worried that wouldn't work. You told me you were confident it would work. I had to exaggerate my confidence to work up the nerve to do it. You mean you lied? I didn't lie. We got here, didn't we? Besides, you were about to try this on your own, without my artifice and know-how to get you here. It's highly unlikely you would have gotten anywhere without my help. Uh, fine, whatever. Thank you. I guess I hadn't planned things very well. Uh, you okay, kid? I don't know if it's the shrooms or the trip to a pocket dimension, but I feel like I'm gonna barf. Oh no! Does this mean I'll barf on Dawn's bed in real life? It's the trip to the pocket dimension. You get used to it. I had to carry a barf bag with me for the first few months I started going to the workshop. I just kept blowing chunks as soon as I landed. 
It was a mess. Just take deep breaths. I'm so glad this worked. Do you know what these mushrooms make you go through when you're not going to a pocket dimension? No. Is it bad? I don't know. I was asking you. Oh, I have no idea. I just know you don't come out of the trip unless you reach a resolution to something. I know all the same things you do. And you were really just going to take the shrooms and cross your fingers that you'd land here? Oh. Can you get off my fucking back? I'm barely an adult. I'm trying to do some magic that's seriously above my druid level. You're right on both counts, but you just promise me you'll call me from now on before you pull any big magic business, alright? Two witches are better than one. <sighs> okay. I promise. We're here. Now how do we find Kyle? You didn't know where to find him? Why? Why would I know that? Keegan! These mushrooms won't wear off until we've reached a resolution to something. Uh, duh. I just said that. We came here to find Kyle. What if that's the only resolution it'll accept? Relax. We'll find him. I can't relax. I've let a novice baby witch possibly trap me in a pocket dimension for an untold amount of time. Oh my god. We'll figure it out. Let's go find Kyle. Okay. How? We'll start walking. Maybe open some doors. Oh, there are a fuck ton of doors here. Don saw him here recently. Uh, he has to be behind one of them. I don't think you want to open any of these doors. Oh, the arcade! We, we've got to head towards the arcade. We don't have time for that. No, we should try to find the arcade. That's a room that Rita and Kyle used together. I think it's close to his neighborhood? Maybe we'll see more of his rooms there. Right now, it looks like we're in the middle of a bunch of rooms Rita created. Are you sure about that? What? Why? This door just says Pedro Pascal reading Shakespeare in Spanish. Anybody could have made that room. Hell, if I were a demigod, I'd make that room. Everyone would make that room. That's a perfect room. I agree. But look at the rooms on either side of it. Erotic Lesbian Oil Wrestling Auditorium and Peanut Butter. This is Rita's neighborhood. The, the door that just says Peanut Butter is it's really unsettling. I, mean, I, I understand the oil wrestling room, sure, but, but the, the peanut butter? Same. Is it peanut butter storage? Why would she need a place to store peanut butter when she can magically manifest it whenever she wants? And if it's not for... Peanut butter storage. Ugh. Gross. I don't want to think about it. My mind isn't coming up with anything good. From what I've heard of Kyle, this doesn't sound like him. I don't think he has all of Rita's proclivities. We should keep walking and see if we find any doors that feel more like something he would make. Good idea. Before we go... Maybe I should just take a peek in the oil wrestling room really fast and just... If we don't have time for arcade stuff, we don't have time for you to watch lesbian oil wrestling. <sighs> that's... that's fair. I'll try to come back and see you before I leave, oily lesbians. Mwah. How are we supposed to find the arcade? Don calls this place the infinite hallway. I don't see any turns. I don't know. Then how is the arcade a helpful idea when we don't know how to find it? When Rita took me there, she just said, Oh, let me show you the arcade. Then she grabbed my arm and dragged me down the hall with her. You think finding rooms is something that only Rita and Kyle can do? Dawn's done it too. Yeah, but she has necromancer powers that Kyle gave her. <sighs> you're not helping. I'm just pointing out how your non-plan doesn't work. You haven't planned anything beyond need to talk to Kyle. That's not helpful. You're not helping. I'm doing my fucking best. Don left me so much responsibility, and I can't let everyone down. If I fuck up, they're stuck in hell. If I don't figure this out, I'm gonna lose my weird gay aunts and their fucking dog, and it's all gonna be my fault. I can't lose all of them. I already lost my grandma last year. I don't want to lose... I'm sorry. I know you're trying your best, and 
I didn't need to frame my criticism so negatively. I want to help. I want to get them out of hell too. You're not handling all this alone, kiddo. You've got the workshop and you grow of helping out. We're all going to get this figured out. You don't have to carry all of this by yourself. I don't know what to do. Well, if we treat this scientifically, I think my first step would be trying to recreate the circumstances in which you first went to the arcade to the best of our ability. What do you mean? Well, it sounds like Rita thought about going to the arcade, and then she took you down the hall. I know Rita can control things in the dreamscape, so it might be something that only she can do. But I don't think it would hurt for us to try that first. Be really intentional about the idea of the arcade? And start walking down the hall? I think our brains have been all over the place since we got here. Maybe if we try to focus on the arcade while we walk, like Rita seemed to do when she took you there, we'll find it. That sounds like a good idea. Thank you, Viv. Listen, I know we don't know each other super well, but Dawn made it very clear that she sees me as family. And if you consider her one of your gay aunts, by the transitive property, that makes me your gay aunt too. As your gay aunt, I'm going to help however I can. But I'm also going to tell you when you have a dog shit plan. It won't hurt me to be nicer about telling you that your plan is dog shit, though. <laughs> I got a lot of gay aunts. You're a very lucky young man. You ready? Yeah. Let's think about the arcade. Alrighty. Viv and Keegan tried to keep the thought of the arcade in the front of their minds, like a strange mantra for meditation. Arcade. 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 As they walked, Keegan noticed that the doors started looking different. I think... I think it's working. Why do you say that? Look at these doors. Uh, we're back to the Pedro Pascal room. I think this is Kyle's Pedro Pascal room. Look at the rooms on the other side of it. Sur le Tab and Bear vs. Twink Erotic Oil Wrestling Auditorium. This doesn't make any sense. Why? Kyle's gay. He loves Sir La Table and Erotic Oil Wrestling. No, I mean, it's not much of a competition. The bear's gonna win every time. I don't think the point of the room is who wins or loses. Look at the one on the other side. The Lanai? What is that? Why does that tell you this is Kyle's neighborhood? That's the Golden Girls logo font, right? Lanai? All the brass on this door is straight out of the 80s. I'm familiar with the fact that there's an old television show called Golden Girls. I've watched it. What I don't understand is, why are you the one telling me about an old-ass TV show? Grandma Kiva liked to watch the reruns. We hung out a lot. Oh, that's very cute. Are we sure Rita didn't make this room for some gilf fantasy? Pretty sure. I think it would... Say something like Blanche's boudoir, if that were the case. I'd love another piece of cheesecake. Did you hear that? Yeah. Was that him? I... I don't know. He was unconscious the whole time we saw him. Should we look? I mean, I guess. We can come back out and keep looking for the arcade if this isn't the right room. Viv and Keegan walked into the room. It seemed more like they were walking out onto a back porch. From the shade of the pergola, they took in the sight. Tropical plants were everywhere, and palm trees hung over the concrete half wall that surrounded the lanai. Past the pergola, there was some hideously dated outdoor furniture. They spotted Kyle on an oatmeal-colored chaise longue. He held a dessert plate with a massive slice of cheesecake on top. Mm. On a neighboring chaise longue, mm. an incredibly small elderly woman with this massive glasses a held a similarly coffee, large piece of cheesecake. Oh, you are so right. Don't get up. I got it, Maria. Holy crap. It's not that impressive, Maria. You've seen me do more than create some coffee. Not the coffee, you fruitcake. Look up from the cheesecake for a second. I know you're from a different time, but you can't call me fruitcake. It's home of- ah! What the hell are you doing, you overdramatic queen? You wasted a perfectly good slice. Who are you? The DMV sent you, didn't they? How did you get here? We're not- <laughs> Why would the Department of Motor Vehicles send a tall lesbian and a little boy to our house? You're not Mormons, are you? 
<laughs> of course you're not. You don't have those little suits and bikes. I'm not a little boy. I'm 21. And I'm bisexual, actually. Get back, motherfuckers! Why did you make a sword? Will anyone <laughs> let us fucking talk? A sword! Look at you go, Sir Gallahomo. <laughs> Why is she so gently homophobic? Sophia! S- <laughs> st- don't, don't, don't finish saying that name. That's Maria. You gotta say her name is Maria. What? Why? That character in the show is named... Don't say that name! Holy fuck. This is Maria! Why? I don't have the rights to use those other characters. This is my friend Maria. She's the store brand version of the other lady. She's the Dr. Thunder to her Dr. Pepper. Hello, lesbian. Hello, little boy. Oh. I don't know who would find you to file something for an intellectual property violation, but I guess I get it. You can't be too careful. Of course. I think I'd probably be cautious about that, too, if I were you. <sighs> well, what branch of the DMV are you from? You don't look like you work for them. <sighs> That's because we're not from the DMV, asshole. Keegan, I know he just looks like some guy, but maybe lay off calling death an asshole. You're not from the DMV? No! Oh, <laughs> ooh. Why didn't you say so? They tried to tell you, Mary. Really? Why is she so diet homophobic? I tried to make her accurate to a woman that age from an 80s and 90s sitcom, but I haven't worked out the problem where she's obsessed about bringing up that I'm gay. Oh, she would do that on the show, wouldn't she? We're friends of Dawn and Rita's. Can we ditch the old lady? We need to talk. (laughs) Hear that, Kyle? She wants to ditch you. (laughs) I still need to do some work on her. Maybe making her sitcom accurate wasn't the right move. Definitely not. Please, please, have a seat on the chase lounge. We can talk. Would you like some cheesecake? I wouldn't say no. We don't have time for all that. Hey, how did you get here? We took some magic mushrooms that took us here with Rita before. We weren't sure they would work since Rita's in hell, but it was worth a shot. I used the device we used to find you in hell to try and approximate your location now. We left it on while we took the mushrooms in the hopes that it would be more likely to get here. You can track my location? Yeah, turns out we can. Interesting. Hate that. And I don't love that any of you can just pop in here unannounced. We won't make a habit out of it. Hold on. Why doesn't Rita have access to the dreamscape still? Can't you control where she can access the dreamscape? We move the opening to the workshop every day. Rita has to be close to home to access the dreamscape. It's a safety measure I took. She never felt home at the DMV, so I knew she'd never accidentally give them access by opening a door from there to here. So, home is a feeling, and not a geographical location? Correct. We're celestial beings. It's a little hard to put exact coordinates on most places we'd go. It was easier to go on vibes. It's not hard to put exact coordinates on anything. I got the coordinates to get you out of that re-education camp. I did it with a bunch of defunct electronics. It's true. She used a car GPS that's nearly as old as I am. Listen, I'm death. I am death. I did my best. I'm the busiest guy in the world. How am I supposed to be good at interdimensional geology, too? You mean geography? No. I don't. I don't mean that. What exactly did you come all this way to annoy me about? Don and Sonny went to hell to get Rita. And Master Lennon. We need your help to get them out. I can't travel between dimensions all willy-nilly without the DMV crawling up my ass. It's not safe for me now. I escaped from the re-education camp. They're actively looking for me. Oh, we know that. We're not asking you to get them out of hell. What do you want me to do then? We want you to help us take down the DMV. (laughs) Oh, you're serious? Oh, you're serious. After Millie's ancient palate failed spectacularly at drinking a sparkling water, she got herself cleaned up in the bar bathroom. 
She came out to see Rita dealing with Horny Derek. Mohawks are cool, but I think he'd be pretty without it. Fuck off, Horny Derek. I can tell you're trying to neg me. Is the negging working? I'm fighting the impulsive thought to smash a bottle against your head. Is that a yes? Oh, look, it's my sister. Oh, sisters. I'll rip your spine out and wear it as a belt. Jesus Christ. I'm out. Yeah. You'd better run, horny Derek. I would rather die than throw up one more time. Yeah, I hate throwing up. Come on. We need to talk to Stinky Derek. The bartender said that's him in the booth over there. Can we just call him Derek? It feels really mean to call someone Stinky anything. He probably can't help it, and I don't feel... Oh, holy shit! It's like I ate a can of Axe body spray! Close! It's bod body spray! Really ripped abs! Why are you talking about your abs? It's the name of the cologne! Stinky Derek. You make yourself stinky on purpose? You don't have to use that much body spray, dude. I I needed to distinguish myself from every other black market goods dealer in this dimension. I I needed to brand myself. It's my signature. People know when Stinky Derek is in the room. Oh, you're not wrong. Stinky Derek, may we have a seat? Uh, Please, join me in my booth. Rita? Oh, uh, me too? You need me for this? You were going to come do this alone, so I just thought... Sit down. You're being rude. (sighs) So what can I do for you? I'm Millie. I believe Bungus the Flatulent told you I would be seeking you out? Oh, Bungus. Yeah. That farty son of a bitch. He he may have said something. So, you have it? The DMV transporter? I I do not. Sold it to Ron Johnson. The King of Vitriol? Yep. Bungus requested you hold it for me. It's only been a day since I spoke with him. Oh, I, uh, I didn't have it in either. What? Listen, I have loads of other goodies you'll love. One of the hardest parts of business is just getting the customers in the door and telling you I had the transporter, got you here. So you've gotten our hopes up and wasted our time? No, not at all. I have loads of other stuff you might like. Can any of them transport us to Ambrosio's dimension? Or Earth? Yes, fine. Ambrosio's dimension or Earth. No, but but you don't want to go there anyway. I've never been, but I've heard horror stories. Ambrosio's dimension? No, that that place is all right. I'm talking about Earth. You don't want to go there. I definitely want to go to Earth. Really? I got so many other magical items you can't live without. I, I even got a few things from Earth. I've got an orb of feline attention, but when activated, it makes any cats within a mile radius head your way. I've got an amulet of vehicular frugality. You wear it while you buy a car, it guarantees you the best possible deal. I've got a Tamagotchi. Holy shit, does it work? Yep. Millie, can Shut we... Shut up. Let's see, I got I got half of a shiggy ball in here. Fuck! You bitch, you stabbed my cologne spray in hand! You brought us here under false pretenses. We don't want any of your garbage. Well, actually, I do really Rita want that Rita wants that garbage. flat plastic egg, but she wants a lot of useless things. What do you want from me? I, I don't have your fucking DMV transporter! Can you get us... Access to Ron Johnson's palace. No! Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! Wrong answer. I I don't ah, I don't I don't have a key or anything. I just I just have the fucking gate code. Write it down on this napkin. You have a pen? I, I, I don't know. God, this hurts so bad. I'm gonna puke. Oh, God! I recently puked for the first time in millennia, and I recognize that it may serve as an effective means of torture. Find a fucking pen, or I'll make you vomit. Oh, I'm looking, I'm looking! Oh, I have one! Oh my god, is that a Hamtaro pen? Yeah, yeah, I got it in the same import from Earth as the the Tamagotchi! Write the fucking gate code. If this code turns out to be fake, I'm going to find you and make you drink 
each one of your horrid perfumes until you vomit yourself to death. What if I misremember one of the numbers? Then I hope you're thirsty for really ripped abs. <laughs> My sister will be taking the hamster pen and the flat plastic egg as a recompense for your deceptive sales strategies. Yes! Can I explain Hamtaro to you while we walk back to the warehouse? We're not going to the warehouse. We're going straight to Ron Johnson's palace. Can I explain Hamtaro to you while we walk to Tom Bronson's palace? Ron Johnson. Don't care. <sighs> Fine. So Hamtaro is a hamster, and he has these hamster friends called Ham Hams. <laughs> there was a manga, video games... What is a manga? Oh, dang, I have so much to teach you. Hi, you've reached the housekeeping section, and it might be the housekeeping section of today's lucky winner, and it might be the housekeeping section of Info Dumpies, because I am recording a housekeeping section far in advance, because we are going to be moving, and I want to be able to have all of these episodes still coming out while we're moving, but I also do need to pack up things in my recording center station in my room, and I don't want to record bad audio for y'all, so... This housekeeping section is going to be the same for probably a couple of months. I usually like to wait to record these until closer to the episode uh, because I want our Patreon shoutout people to be up to date and accurate. But I think y'all understand that you'll get more episodes this way and we don't have to pause anything to make you wait longer. And as soon as I'm able to record these closer to the date, um, I'm going to start doing that again. But in the meantime, here's the housekeeping section for a show. So if you like the episode of whatever show you're listening to at the moment, uh, check out the episode details to find everyone's social media handles. You can find Mixnomer on uh, Instagram at the handle Mixnomer Productions. If you're listening to today's lucky winner, all of the cast have their social media handles in the episode details so you can see what we're doing on the interwebs. Um, and if you want to support us, the best way you can do that is by sharing about the show. We don't pay for ads, and we don't take paid ads, so you sharing the show is the way we grow. Like, word of mouth is the way we grow uh, any of our shows. So if you want to tell someone in your Discord server, in your subreddit, in the grocery store, I don't know, anywhere, you tell someone about it. It helps us out a lot. If you are in a place to help us monetarily, you can find a link to our Patreon for Mix Nelmer in the show details. So when you become a Patreon subscriber, you are subscribing to get content for any and all shows we make in perpetuity, uh, and you get to support everything we do. It gets split among our cast members because we do profit sharing and we try to make sure that everyone essentially gets the same hourly rate for their work. So when you become a Patreon supporter, starting at the $1 level, you can get access to our Discord server, where we do things like streams where we play Jackbox games, streams where you watch me and Violet play a video game together, I do body doubling, I started doing like a little stitch and bitch hour where we do uh, different fiber arts and we just chat. It's like a virtual knitting circle. It's very fun. But when you do that, it's just at the dollar level, you get access to all of that. And then at higher levels, you get access to things like music from Today's Lucky Winner and live recordings of our Today's Lucky Winner episodes and all of the notes from me and Violet and our guests that they make for uh, Info Dumpies episodes that have a bunch of links so you can go learn more about a subject that you heard on an episode of Info Dumpies. There's lots of cool stuff, and when you support us on Patreon at certain levels, you can also get a cool shout out, like our friends Randy Lovings, Rachel Rachelson, Sewing Seraph, B. Trossler, Smurdy Singh, Helen Clifford, M. Mosin, Lucy, and Nicole Valdivieso. And if you haven't yet, it would be really helpful for us if you left a rating and a nice review to let people know that you liked our shows. Um, it helps us get higher in recommendations and on different charts and get recommended to more people. 
um, subscribing also does that, and it costs you nothing, and that helps us out a lot. So if you would like to support us in another way, that's another way you can help us out. But yeah, hopefully I will be having my recording set up at our new house when we get moved to, we're moving from Texas to Minneapolis, so that's going to be a big change. Um, but once we get settled in Minneapolis and I have my recording station set up, these housekeeping sections will be bespoke per episode of show again, I promise. I feel bad cutting corners and I feel bad that there's some people who might, um, who might join our Patreon between now and then who might not get their shout out immediately. But again, I would rather get you shows in a timely manner than worry about that too much. I'm trying to not let my perfectionism take over, but that's all I got for you, little buddies. Um, God, if you listen to Info Dumpies and you don't listen to today's lucky winner calling you little buddies it sounds condescending, um, but I promise it's not. But that's all I got for you now, little buddies. Until next time, try not to die. And if you're an Info Dumpies listener and you don't listen to today's lucky winner, um, my ending is... That's my ending. Okay, sorry. <laughs>